Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll cover two capital land REITs with almost the same industry properties but with different performance from one another. This is very interesting because it shows how different performances can be depending on where the properties are. Now let us get straight right in to the analyzing their recent result. And the first will be Capital Land India Trust. Capital Land India Trust is an interesting read that is fully focused on the Indian market. They have majority of the assets in office at 86%, while logistic and industrial properties are at 8% and data centers is at 6%. Now, right off the bat, what risk can you see from these assets? First, foreign currency risk. SGD has been strengthening versus India rupee. This will definitely be a negative impact to their income that you receive in SGD. Second, is the huge concentration in the offices. I feel that this is one sector to keep a close look as commercial parks are not doing well in recent times, which can be seen from the US commercial market. But of course, I'm not familiar with the market demand in India. If you have any idea, you can also leave a comment below. Now let's take a look at their results. For their financial year of 2023, Forex for SGD continue to strengthen 8.7% year over year. And this is definitely not a good thing when the India rupee has to be converted back to SGD as dividends. Impressively, if we focus on the SGD, revenue and MPI still increase 11% and 8% respectively. However, Distributable income drops because of the increase in the finance costs which we will see in their debt profile later. This resulted in a decrease in distributable income of 10% and DPU of a huge value of 22%. The DPU drop was also amplified due to the share dilution from preferential offering. This is the issues with REITs. If the growth in the income is slower than the increase in the finance costs or share dilutions, the dividend given by the REIT will definitely be lower. So this is something you have to take note when investing in REITs. Always account for conservative estimations for the drops in DPU to find out what dividend yield you would like to buy in. This chart shows the impact of foreign currency strengthened changes. When investing in highly concentrated overseas REIT, foreign currency strength can never be underestimated. Since their IPO, currency strength of India rupee has dropped 58%, which might have contributed to the volatility in their dividends. In this high interest rate environment, it's not surprising that their DPU will also be drastically hit as similar to other rates. For foreign rates, not only do the interest rate pull down the dividends, the foreign currency also dragged its dividend which can be seen from the large drop in the DP. Next, looking at their debts, the Gary ratio is fine at 35.8%, but what surprises me is the huge cost of debt at 6.3%. Because of the high cost of debt, their interest coverage ratio is at a low of 2.6 times. If you see India's interest rate, it's at an average of 6.5%. That's why it's not surprising that for Capital Land India Trust, interest rate is expected to be high. However, the big issue is that their debt maturity is only at 2.3 years, which we can see from this chart that most of their debts are required to be refinanced in the financial year of 24 to 26. Based on the average interest rate in India, I would not be surprised if we continue to see an increase in the cost of debt when the loans are refinanced. Next, let's look at their occupancy. Occupancy-wise, they are doing fine with only two properties doing badly at 75% and 62%. This might be a concern for one of the buildings because we can see that it's 10% of the overall portfolio while the Mumbai property is a much smaller concern as it's only 2.5% of the overall asset. Therefore, bad performances of the assets will definitely affect CIT more. Tenant-wise, they have a decent diversified tenant but my only concern is that the data consultancy is at a high of 12% of their rental income. Other than that, I have no issue with their tenants. Good thing about CIT is that they have been actively improving their properties 
which is always welcome to improve the rental collections from tenant. Moreover, India is growing quickly as a country which might help CIT in the future for more demands on their property. Now, this slide is very important as it shows that when you invest in REITs, it's not just about looking at net property income. We see that the net property income which is derived from revenue minus property expenses has increased decently at a compounded annual growth rate of 10%. However, the dividend given to the investors states otherwise, with DBU fluctuating up and down. Why? Because there are additional factors such as finance costs and share dilution done by the management to raise cash that will affect the DPUs. This will affect the distributable income and end up with lower dividends for shareholders. So this is why it's very important to take note when it comes to investing in REITs. At the estimated share price, its market cap is currently at 1.32 billion with property valuation at about 2.951 billion. With semi-annual dividend given, it's at a dividend yield of 6.8%. If you enjoyed this video so far, please support the channel by hitting the like, subscribe and comment on what you feel about the REITs share prices so far. Thank you and let's continue with the video. Let's go on to the next Capital Land REIT which is Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust. For those who are new to CICT, they are a REIT which focuses mostly in Singapore at 92.8% while Germany and Australia properties are only at 3.6% respectively. They are mostly retail, offices and hotels properties. However, with most of the properties in Singapore, CICT is one of the standout REITs that continues to perform and increase their dividend which we will see later. Looking at the important metrics, occupancy went up by 1.5% year over year while property valuations went up by 1.2% year over year. This small increase of 1.2% cannot be underestimated because in this high interest rate environment, their property valuations still able to go up unlike most of the REITs where their valuations actually went down. Rental reversions was also good across the board for financial year of 2-3 even for office portfolio. Like I mentioned in my previous video, because Singapore is unique with business coming in and being in a very limited space country, it brings about different attractiveness compared to overseas properties. Retail side is also doing well as expected with tenant sales and shopper traffic up year over year at 1.8% and 8.6% respectively. It's quite interesting because this slide shows again how important it is for REITs to have Singapore properties. Singapore properties valuation went up by 2% while Germany and Australia properties went down by 10%. Fortunately, because most of their properties is in Singapore, the overall comes in to be an increment of 1.2%. If we look at their revenue and net property income, it's impressive with increase across the board. This resulted in 8.2% higher in revenue and 7% in higher net property income. This slide again emphasizes how good CICT performances is, with year-over-year -year dividend increasing from 10.58 cents to 10.75 cents. So what this means is that the increase in the net property income is faster than the increase in their cost of debt expenses. This is good as it shows how good the management is in managing the finance in this high interest rate environment. Looking at their debts, the leverage ratio is on the higher side at 39.9% while cost of debt is at 3.4%. The interest coverage ratio is resulted at 3.1 times. Now, although their leverage ratio is high, it's fine because of two reasons. 1. CICT is a big read, so 10% gap in the leverage ratio is a much larger value as compared to those smaller reads. Second, they also have a very solid investment rating from financial institutes, which backs them to be solid financially. Lenders will also be more willing to lend them money because of these good investment readings. However, debt maturity profile-wise, there is quite a decent number of debts that needs to be refinanced. If you see for the next few years, there are lots of debts that needs to be refinanced. 
So one way to estimate what is the interest rate they might renew to, is to look at their recent term loans taken. Based on the full year financial statement, they have issued notes at 3.938% on the latest notes. This meant that there's a chance that once they renew the loans, their average cost of debt of 3.4% might still continue to go up. So we have to observe this closely for the next few quarters. So if we see their Q1 results, they have actually renewed 300 million of the medium term loans in 2024. Their cost of debt because of this have went up by 0.1% to 3.5%. But if their properties can continue to do well, with profits increasing faster than the increase in the finance costs, then their dividends will be expected to continue to go up. Looking at their occupancy, overall occupancy is at 97.3% which is high for retail and office properties. The interesting part is that the retail site has an average lease of 2 years. This might benefit CICT because Singapore retail properties are doing well. So, rental reversions might come in higher once the tenants renew. CICT has well spread tenant with only RC hotels at 5.1% of the total group income. This is decent as the collapse of any major tenants will not have a huge impact on their overall income. At the current share price, its market cap is at 13.2 billion with property valuations of 24.5 billion. With semi-annual dividends given, it's at a dividend yield of about 5.2%. Even though they are a good read, at this high interest rate environment, the current dividend yield might not look that attractive. But if they continue to do well, there might be potential gains in both the dividends and the capital gains. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video brings about good insights for you when it comes to investing in either of these capital land reads. Although both REITs have a very strong sponsor, properties in different countries will definitely have difference in performance as well. If you find this video helpful, please support the channel by hitting the like, subscribe and comment on what you would like me to work on next. You can also watch my previous video where I compare between 4 REITs which I consider them to be very decent. Or you can also watch how the interest rate have actually affected REITs in general. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.